It's like we say all the time, even, oh, the wisdom and majesty of God, that all things are in Christ. There's a difference between Christ being in all things and all things being in Christ. Mm -hmm. do, do you see what yes. I'm saying? Especially when you're talking about humans. Everything is in Christ, but Christ is not in everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you understand what I'm saying. And we'll just use this example that Bertie used. Donald Trump is the president of the United States. When he, whether you like it or not, when he goes into other countries, he's representing you, right? The, and so everyone is in Donald Trump. Whether they believe in Donald Trump or not, everyone is in Donald Trump. But Donald Trump is not in everyone, if you can understand what I'm saying. Because not everybody believes on Donald Trump. So he's not dwelling in the heart of all people, right? And, and, and what we have to understand about Christ is he's not just a person. Right? Yes, he put on human flesh, and yes, he's a person, and yes, God is a person, but there's a wisdom contained in Christ by which all things consist, right? That all things are held together. Paul would say it this way, all things exist and consist in Christ. Without Christ, there is nothing that exists that exists. Everything has gathered life from that. Now, even when things try to take themselves outside of Christ, Christ is so much and so interwoven into all things they still can't take themselves out, right? It will still declare Christ. It will still work its way back to what was declared in Christ. It will still reveal Christ. It will all point back to Christ, right? So even like with the blood, right? Man took themselves outside of Christ, seemingly. And we did in the sense of not partaking of eternal life. But even in what we did to take ourselves outside of eternal life, that very thing was now going to take us and put us back into <laughs> eternal life. That's right. do, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you see how that worked? Now, that doesn't mean that people can't perish. Right. But even like the devil. And we talked about this before. Angels are ministering servants to humans. Jude come and talked about angels falling from their first estate. What was their first estate? Their first estate would have been ministering servants to humans. Well, Lucifer said, I ain't going to minister to those guys. I'm better than them. Anything they can do, I can do better. Right. I can do anything better than you. Right? That's what Lucifer's busy thinking. I'm going to serve these clowns? Look, they're not even wearing clothes. They don't even know they're naked. And I'm going to... I mean, you can see the angels in the background pointing at the human. This guy, don't look at them. They're naked. They don't even know it. What's wrong with them? <laughs> you know? And so you can see Lucifer thinking, I am not going to be a ministering servant. Then. So he fell from his first estate. And then he began corrupting his wisdom. What was he supposed to minister to humans? You see this beauty that I'm clothed in? The way you're going to be clothed in that beauty is by eating from the tree of life. Mm -hmm. Right? And so he, but he corrupted his wisdom. And he began promising humans the beauty of God's life. He began promising humans they'd be decorated in the beauty of God's life by the knowing of good and evil. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. Through their knowledge of good and evil, they could use their ability to bring forth the good and not bring forth evil, and then that would decorate them in the fruit of God's life. Mm -hmm. So he took himself outside of what he was supposed to declare. But even in him declaring that to humans, should humans partake of that, it will declare that you can't be decorated in God's life by the works exactly. of your own hands. Right. It still declares Christ. Yes. So the serpent's wisdom still declares what Christ declared, which is you cannot have life by the works of your own hands. So even should you adopt the serpent system, as you adopt that system and that system brings forth the fruit of death in you, that system will be declaring to you that you can't give yourself life. Mm -hmm. Right? What did Adam see after he tried to clothe himself? He saw he was still naked. And so what did his nakedness declare to him? You can't clothe yourself, bro. Isn't that what Christ declares? Yes. Right? Do you, exactly. do you see that dynamic? Yes. And so all things declare Christ in some way. Right? Mm -hmm. All things point to Christ for life in some way. <laughs> all things. That's why this idea, the carnal mind will come up with all types of silly questions. What about those that didn't hear from Christ? Well, you must first prove that there's some that don't hear the word of Christ. Okay, in philosophy class, if you wanted to bring a premise to the board, you had to first prove that the premise carried any weight. You can't just come up with any thought you want and say, we must now reason about this thought. No, no, no. You've got to prove that the thought has some bearing, right? So what do you, so the question of, what about those that haven't heard about Jesus? Okay, first prove there's some that haven't heard about Jesus. Then we'll talk about that. Otherwise, we're busy with nonsense. Right. And otherwise, we're busy reasoning with the carnal mind. 
right? I don't say that there's never a time to come and answer a question, depending on where a person's at. But so much of what Christians do is we come with the premise that come from the carnal mind, and then we want to waste our time talking about that premise. It's nonsense, right? It's unprofitable, really. I mean, Maurice said a beautiful thing one day on a post, and I don't say we can't answer questions. But Maurice just kind of said in a nice way, hey, listen, man, I don't know that it's even profitable to sit around and think about this. <laughs> and it was so full of wisdom. I mean, the person didn't like that he said that. <laughs> and I think they come and ch they chastise you and chastise everybody else that had an answer on that. <laughs> but sometimes it's true, right? Not all reasoning is profitable reasoning. And it's like, what are we reasoning about? And is there any real uh, foundation from where we should be reasoning about that? Right? No, no, no. First prove that there's people that haven't heard about Jesus, and then we'll talk about that. Because if you can't prove it, then it's just nonsensical, and it's a waste of time. Right? Because Paul would come and say, everyone has heard. And he would come and say, all of creation declares Christ. Everything declares Christ. Right? Everything declares Christ. Amen. And so there ain't a single person that won't have heard about Christ. Don't matter what religious they, what religion they were brought up in. Doesn't matter what area of the earth they were raised in. Doesn't, that's all the carnal mind. That's all the carnal mind trying to talk itself out of Christ is the only way to the Father. Right? So you got a whole bunch of humans that have a whole lot of ideas about the way to life or the way to God or all that stuff. We all sit around with all of our ideas and we all think we're real smart. We sit around and talk about how smart we are. No, no, no. How could it be only Jesus? Look at those people born in India. They're raised in a different system. They got a disadvantage. Oh, yeah? Who said that? Did you come up with that in your own mind? So we got a bunch of humans reasoning about how Jesus can't be the only way, and here's all of our foolishness about why that's got to be true. Right? Then God says, all our people are very confused. It's like they all come together and reason about many things and all their imaginations are quite vain. And their imaginations are deceiving them into nonsense. First of all, these guys don't even know what brings life or what brings death. How can they even get to the place where Amen. they understand anything? Right? Exactly. So he says, I know how we'll clear it up. We'll send my son. He'll clear up all the confusion. He'll stand in the midst of a bunch of people that are reasoning about the way into life and what it looks like. And... He'll come and stand in the midst of them and he'll talk about the way unto life. And then after he spends 30 years or 30 years talking about the way unto life, that guy will come out of the grave wearing the life he declared. Okay. Now he's standing in a room with all the people talking about the way into life. Guess who's the only one who has it? Him. Do you know what that declares? There's one guy that knows the way unto life. And whatever he said about the way unto life is the only truth. Because he's the only one who ever come out of the grave clothed in eternal life. That's the evidence that he came speaking on behalf of God. Right? And unless you're going to show me how Buddha come out of the grave, unless you're going to show me how the Maharaja come out of the grave, unless you're going to show me how any of these guys come out of the grave, then what they have to say about the way into life is dumb. Someone in the Bible says, says, what is dumb? It's animal crap. It's poop. Well, what does that mean? It means it's worthless. Everybody's idea about the way to have life outside of Jesus' idea is worthless. How do we know? Because he came out of the grave free from death, never to be able to die again. And that tells us that that's the guy who knew. Right? And what did Jesus say? I am the way that is the truth unto life. Yes. No man comes to the Father except through me. Did he say some people? Did he say Buddha has some good ideas? Let me just build on that. No, no, no. He didn't say any of that. And in fact, if you really study what Buddha taught, it's a contradiction to what Jesus taught. It's actually the antithesis. It's a way to try to have peace, but in a completely opposite way of how God gives peace. Right? And so there's no wisdom in it. It's actually the corrupt wisdom of the serpent. Right? right? I'm going to, by my ability, give myself peace. Right. Right. That's what it is. Yes. By my meditation, by my positive thinking, by my positive confessing. We even have Christians that have taken on that nonsense. By my positive confession, I'm going to freaking have life. I mean, I grew, I lived through a system where if you even tried to tell a person you were having a bad day, oh, that's, you're in doubt. Right. You're not full of faith. Don't have those negative confessions, yeah. brother. Don't you're, speak that. You're creating your life. 
Yeah. 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 Listen, man, I'm not God. <coughs> and we completely misunderstand when it says God said and, and created. What God said wasn't just any word. He spoke the spirit of faith. Yes. It says Christ is what created all things. So the word God spoke was the faith. Right? He wasn't speaking all these little nonsense. He was, it wasn't like I walk out there and say, I want to have a, I want to have, a, what's that guy's name? Elon Musk, new truck. Yeah. Listen, guys, I don't care how much I go out there and say that out loud in the parking lot. <laughs> Elon Musk's new truck is not going to materialize that. <laughs> and if I'm going to now live by, I'm going to have life by what I can say out of my mouth. Listen, man, that is a lie from the pit of hell. 